Spica is the brightest object in the constellation of Virgo and one of the 20 brightest stars in the night sky. Designated Alpha Virginis, the star is located roughly 250 light years from the Sun. A spectroscopic binary, Spica is also a rotating ellipsoidal variable. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video, we're taking a trip to the Virgo constellation to visit a star that seems to be one of the people's favourites, Spica. So, let's get to it. Before we start today's video, some channel news. Today's video will be our last before spring recess. Some of you will know already that at this time of the year, unfortunately, my day job means that over the next couple of months, I just won't have time to continue writing videos. Although I do hope to perhaps put one or two out if I get a chance. We will return formally in early July with a fresh new video. Anyhow, back to Spica. An ellipsoidal variable is a system whose two stars are so close together that they become egg-shaped rather than spherical and can only be separated by their spectra. As one of the nearest massive binary stars to the Sun, Spica has been the subject of many observational studies. One of perhaps the most important things about the star for mankind is that Spica is believed to be the star that gave Hipparchus the data that led him to discover the precession of the equinoxes. This phenomenon refers to the gradual shift in the orientation of Earth's rotational axis, which causes the positions of the equinoxes to move westward along the ecliptic over time. This procession has a cycle of approximately 26,000 years, during which the celestial poles trace out circular paths in the sky. A temple in the ancient city of Thebes was oriented with reference to Spica when it was built in 3200 BC, and over time procession slowly but noticeably changed Spica's location relative to the temple. A method of finding Spica is to follow the arc of the handle of the Big Dipper or plough to Arcturus and then continue on the same angular distance to Spica. You may remember this can be recalled by the phrase Arc to Arcturus and Spike to Spica. The two Spica stars, as mentioned, are a very close binary whose components orbit each other every four days, and indeed close enough that they cannot be resolved as two stars through a telescope. Spica is a non eclipse enclosed binary star system where the stars are mutually distorted by their gravitational interaction, and this does cause the apparent magnitude of the star system to vary by 0.03 apparent magnitudes over an interval that matches the very same orbital period. Interestingly, both stars rotate faster than their mutual orbital period, and it is believed that this lack of synchronization and the high ellipticity of their orbit may indicate that Spica is a young star system, as of course over time the mutual tidal interaction of the pair should really lead to rotational synchronization and indeed orbit circularization. The spectral classification of Spica is typically considered as an early B-type main sequence star, although individual spectral types for the two components are difficult to assign accurately, especially for the secondary star due to the struve sahade effect. This struve sahade effect is a change in the strength of the star's spectral lines in some binary systems depending on whether the star is moving toward or away from us. Its cause is still debated, but likely involves gas streams and or stellar wind interactions. All things considered though, the primary star of Spica is believed to have a designation of B13-4 for the primary, and B25 or B2 main sequence for the secondary. But don't take these to the bank of course, as other later studies have also given various different values. The primary star's stellar classification of 3-4 of course means that the star is possibly midway between a subgiant and a giant star, and it's no longer a main sequence star, which does contradict to a degree the idea that the system is a young one. A typical B1 star would expect to live on the main sequence for around 60 million, so perhaps 100 million years at most. And the primary is a massive star with more than 10 times the mass of the Sun, and 7 times its radius, and it's one of the nearest stars to the Sun that has enough mass to end its life in a Type II supernova explosion. Although we've already discussed, as the primary Spica star has only recently left the main sequence, or indeed is still in that process, any supernova event is not likely to occur for several more million years. The secondary star is substantially smaller than the primary, with an estimated and 7 times its the mass of the Sun and 3.6 times its radius. Its stellar classification is still undefined, but is thought to be between B4 and B7 main sequence making it a main sequence star with an expected lifetime of around 200 to maybe 300 million years at most. What this means of course is that the Spica system is facing a very violent future, and we've seen this kind of situation many times before, where two B-type stars, relatively close together, 
spend their lives on the main sequence in a close-in orbit, only for one of the two to go supernova, which in turn means the other is ejected from the system at high speeds. Stars like Naos, or even Betelgeuse, are probably stars that at one point in time were in a system not too dissimilar to Spica, albeit they are more massive stars. And of course, all this is just speculation, and there isn't actually any concrete evidence either way. What does seem likely is that the two stars will not remain in the same close orbit. In this graphic, we imagine what might happen to the Spica system when the primary star does eventually go supernova. The two stars are around 18 million kilometers apart, which translates to around 0.12 astronomical units. As the two stars orbit very close, it's not unusual for material to be interchanged between the stars until finally the principal star exhausts the fuel in its core and collapses inward before it explodes in a Type II supernova. It's difficult to predict what exactly would happen to the secondary Spica star, and it could be that it too is destroyed by the supernova explosion. But perhaps more likely is that the star is ejected at speed away from the explosion, possibly even at relative speeds, to set off on a new journey as a solitary star exploring the Milky Way, and indeed possibly even leaving it if the trajectory is correct. From comparison, we see in this table the speeds of some interesting stars. And although now some Betelgeuse are not as fast as some hypervelocity stars, they are certainly speeding away at an unnatural rate. Spica's secondary star would certainly be likely to join such a list after such a cataclysmic event. Spica is the brightest star in Virgo and among the 20 brightest stars in the night sky. Binary star system of two very close massive stars. The primary star is a B-type subgiant, and the secondary star is a smaller B-type main sequence star. Although the system is believed young, the primary star has begun transitioning away from the main sequence and likely will end its life in a Type II supernova. When this happens, the secondary star may be ejected at high speed, much like other stars such as Betelgeuse or Naos are theorized to have happened. All that remains is a patient galaxy of wait and see before the chaos begins. Thanks for watching and please subscribe if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further, you could consider joining the channel or alternatively buy me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Take really good care of yourselves, look after your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.